Researchers at Xavier University found hospital beds aren't as clean as most of us think. They found infectious bacteria in the very place that's supposed to make us better. In fact, according to the study, 85% of both mattresses and bed decks tested contained several bacteria. Ohio News Network's Lot Tan has the story. This is not a one hospital problem. This is pervasive. Even though the study looked at five hospitals in four different cities, Dr. Eddie Hooker, the author of the study, says everyone needs to be worried about catching a potentially deadly disease when they enter a hospital room. If the patient that was in the bed before you had VRE, which can be fatal, just like MRSA, if that patient had that disease, and was infected with that, you have twice the likelihood of getting an infection. Dr. Hooker says hospitals, not just in Ohio, but everywhere, need to be more aggressive with disinfecting rooms. He advises patients to do two things to protect themselves. Look for visual clean. That's the only thing that they can do. And make sure that every single person, if they haven't washed their hands, don't let them touch it. Appears it was Poor cleaning practices that are at the root of an outbreak of C. difficile infection at the Nanaimo Regional General Hospital, the infection that killed three people. That outbreak stretched over 11 months in 2008 and infected nearly 100 people. Hudson, there were a number of factors leading to that outbreak in 2008, but a Freedom of Information request by the Nanaimo Daily News has revealed the Vancouver Island Health Authority's own experts are putting cleanliness at the top of the list of reasons for the outbreak. Nanaimo Regional General Hospital is back to normal after a recent norovirus outbreak. The highly contagious virus led to visitor restrictions for five days, a relatively short period compared with the lengthy C. difficile outbreak in 2008 that spread throughout the hospital, infecting 94 people and killing three. Critics have blamed the company in charge of cleaning the hospital for the C. difficile outbreak, and now it appears the Vancouver Island Health Authority's own infection experts also point to inadequate cleaning practices as the main reason for the 2008 outbreak. All right, Brent Shearer reporting. Brent, thank you. Thank you. Thousands of veterans fear for their health after unsanitary conditions discovered at three different hospitals. Patients at facilities in Murfreesboro, Augusta, and Miami notified of possible exposure to serious diseases earlier this year. Government inspectors are taking aim at the largest hospital serving the San Fernando Valley. They say Providence St. Joseph Medical Center in Burbank has serious deficiencies and does not meet Medicare standards for infection control. A report based on an inspection last fall could threaten federal funding for the hospital, but hospital officials say they have corrected the problem and believe they'd pass another inspection with flying colors. We took it as a learning lesson, used it as a tool to improve a great hospital to make it greater. We came up with a number of different initiatives to make sure that any discrepancies found in the report were addressed. You go to the hospital to get better, but what if you end up with an infection that could kill you? In this Call 3 consumer investigation, Lindsay Palo explains why some people say hospitals are not doing enough to keep us safe. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Julie Autry says she was a healthy, active mother of four. That changed after having spinal surgery at UC Davis Medical Center last year. The surgery was successful, but when she got home, she became very sick. Autry had a hospital-acquired wound infection. UC Davis Medical Center says she contracted a strain of Strep A and staph, the most common types of infections patients contract in the hospital. The Centers for Disease Control says 1.7 million people get hospital-acquired infections each year. 100,000 die. The added health care costs are in the billions. California hospitals have to have policies in place to prevent infections, like washing hands between patients and maintaining clean environments. But Michael McCauley of Consumers Union says there is no way to tell how often hospitals comply. If hospitals were doing a better job of following uh, proven effective infection control procedures, fewer infections uh, would be happening. 
Jan Emerson is with the California Hospital Association. Hospitals support public reporting of hospital acquired infections. We understand that when you report this information to the public, it's really going to help hospitals focus in um, both on their infection control procedures and on the, the preventative things. KCRA 3 Investigates sent letters to 24 area hospitals asking four questions. Do you track infection data? Do you report it within the hospital? Do you report it outside the hospital? And would you share infection data with us? I would be eager to, to learn what you learn. Six hospitals didn't respond at all. Here's a sampling from those that did. Kaiser Permanente reports to internal quality control teams, Sutter hospitals to medical staff committees and regional board of trustees. UC Davis Med Center reports to multiple committees responsible for patient safety. However, none of the two dozen hospitals would share infection data with us. About one in 20 Americans who are hospitalized get an infection while they're in the hospital. In fact, hospital-acquired infections are among the 10 leading causes of death. I'm here with Dr. Ed Walsh, professor of medicine at the University of Rochester Medical Center, and Dr. Betsy McCoy, the founder of the Committee to Reduce Infection Deaths. Thanks for joining us. Um, Dr. Walsh, as far as infection goes, what does a hospital look like? Well, a hospital today is a much different place than it was 15 or 20 years ago. In what way? In many ways. We have many more patients coming through. We have more crowded emergency rooms. We have uh, shorter hospitalizations with more intensive care being given. And I think most importantly, we actually have a very different pop patient population. Much of our care is outpatient now. It's when they come into the hospital, they're more acutely ill. But what does that mean to the sterility of the place, the, the bacterial environment in the place? Well, one of the problems, of course, is that as we have more crowded facilities and have more crowded populations in, in using these facilities, we have the introduction of, of various organisms into the hospital, uh, various viruses, various bacteria, and so forth. So you make it sound as if it's a seething cauldron of disease. Well, you might consider it a seething cauldron of potential disease. Well, Dr. McCoy, your special interest is hospital-acquired infections. Uh, it doesn't sound like it's a very cheery introduction here. Well, actually, it could be very cheery because the good news is that research shows at least 90% of these infections are preventable. And you don't often come across such a big problem that you can solve. And that's why I founded the Committee to Reduce Infection Deaths, because proper hygiene, rigorous procedures, uh, rigorous cleaning in hospitals can solve many of these problems you're and save about, many lives. You're talking about uh, infections acquired inside the hospital. First. That's right. What do you do to decrease the rates of hospital acquired infections, some of which can be deadly? The most important thing is to make hospitals cleaner and to improve hygiene practices within the hospital. These dangerous drug resistant bacteria get to the patient on unclean hands inadequately cleaned equipment, and improperly cleaned patients' rooms and operating rooms. Dr. Walsh, is, is, it fair, is it fair to characterize hospitals as simply doing a bad job of cleaning up and in, in a, in almost by inattention infecting their, their patients? In some instances, it's, it clearly is. And unfortunately, it's a very complex situation because not only do we have thousands of healthcare workers within the hospital and hundreds of patients, but we have literally on a daily basis thousands of visitors. And they're all carrying stuff in from the outside? Well, everyone is carrying bacteria and viruses at various times, sometimes asymptomatically, and it makes it very difficult. This is hard. You can't see the bugs, right? But until recently, there was an assumption that infection is the inevitable risk you face when you go into the hospital. Here's the irony. In almost every part of the United States, restaurants are inspected for cleanliness, but not hospitals, not even operating rooms. You can go home and make your own dinner. But? But when you have to go to a hospital, you should be able to expect a clean facility. Until 1970, hospitals regularly tested the surfaces for bacterial content. 
1970, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the American Hospital Association literally announced that hospitals should no longer be expending resources testing for bacterial contamination. But the fact is, since that time, MRSA, for example, one of the deadly superbugs, has increased 32-fold. And there is compelling evidence linking poor cleaning in hospitals to high infection rates.